one of the most important principles about filmmaking in general is that it's an additive process. You've got uh, your base layer, which is a screenplay, then you've got your camera movement, uh, where you choose your composition, lens choice. Obviously, you have a dialogue, you have foley, which is additive sound, you have soundtrack. Lighting is just one of those layers that's just as important as any one of the individual pieces. And it's fair to say that um, if you have one of those different ingredients that's not really well thought through, uh, it's going to drag the whole piece down. So you may have the most amazing acting, but if the lighting is terrible, it could probably take you out of the, the entire performance. So definitely something I'd really pay attention to on any film, and I think any good filmmaker does. As you transition from shooting stills to video, you're going to find that in terms of reference, in terms of you know, equipment, you know, light meters are just as useful in photography as they are in filmmaking. Um, you still need to be able to judge the light, judge ratios, judge shadows, uh, see which light is overexposing your key uh, and by how much. So uh, while the tools that you're using to emit the light may be different, the tools that you use to actually measure it are just the same and the techniques are very similar. On motion picture sets, it's not uncommon to be working on a larger scale, and the lights you use also are, tend to be continuous and are not always dimmable. So when you communicate with your crew, it's really important to be able to tell them very specifically what you need done. So when you have a light meter and you know that that light is exactly a third of a stop over X or half a stop, you can tell them to go ahead and put an ND in front of it or a scrim to cut the light down really quickly. But being able to communicate very clearly and efficiently and quickly is really, really a big asset on any set, no matter the scale. So it's very common for a gaffer or a DP to have a light meter in their kit and we use them both in terms of incident light meters and reflective. Uh, the obvious advantage of the incident is that you can put it right up to the, your person's face and get the measurement um, you know, that's being uh, emitted towards your subject. And the spot meter obviously allows you to measure at a greater distance, which is very important uh, on a number of occasions. You just want to see what that background is looking like or if you're using natural light as well and trying to mix that in. Definitely two tools that you really want to have in your arsenal. The beauty of these tools is that uh, they're calibrated and consistent. And when this says, you know, F2 or T2, depending on the nomenclature you're using, that's T2, period. And that's something that's really important to have, is something you can really rely on and check out your monitors, check out the false color as well as the waveform monitors, but know that this is confirming those measurements and vice versa. If you'd like to find out any more information about the Sekonic Light Meter or any of the other tools that I use in my HD DSLR productions, uh, feel free to check out my blog.